Welcome everyone, here we are at the New Jersey Horror Con and Film Festival. Continue before it begins. They're just setting up. So right here we have Scout Taylor Compton and Tyler Main, both from Rob Zombie's 2007 Halloween. The vendors are setting up. Everyone's getting ready for the guests and the mayhem that's gonna ensue here tomorrow. So more to come. You are one of the greatest gifts oh. and the greatest ambassadors <laughs> to that, that community, way. so <laughs> thank you so much. Thank um, you. But I was always curious, you know, you've probably been doing cons since you were, you know, uh, at, I don't know, maybe the late 90s, uh, your no. first convention? When was your first convention? My first one was, I think, 2001. It was at the New Yorker Hotel Weekend of okay. Horrors with Van Gloria, and I was shocked that anyone had ever seen this movie. I was like, <laughs> oh my gosh, this is crazy. We were right after Friday the 13th, and we had a bigger crowd than that. <laughs> and I was like, well, we had never been seen before, so, you know. Um, still, you know. It, was, it, it was amazing to me. I was shocked and delighted, and I was definitely, I'm hooked on horror conventions because I'm a huge fan. I've met my greatest friends and family because of these shows. I sometimes think about what would I do without this family? I don't know. I I haven't a clue because this is the greatest group of people you could ever meet. It's true. If the world would emulate itself after a horror convention, we would be a much better place. We absolutely would. It's very true. Um, so I'm always curious, you know, if that you know, the energy that you put in being so incredible to your fans and stuff. When you started doing cons, was there anyone that you saw kind of doing that and you sort of like, oh, I, that's cool, you know, who, who, did, you know, who were the first people you did cons with that you, that you were like kind of amazed by their, their vibe and stuff? Okay, like first of all, that's such a great question, thank you. thank you. And my number one mentor, and he was not my friend, but he's become one of my best friends, is Kane Hodder. I would sit next to him because I was a fan in amazement, like, that's Kane Hodder. And, <laughs> and he, I've, I've, I've told him, and we've done panels together where I embarrass him and I say this, and he's like, he's a girly star, you know? Um, <laughs> what you doing, girly? Um, and I have a podcast with him, so we talk a lot about this shit. Um, but he was really the one I looked up to because I found him to be so gracious with people. To be the big hulking villain and be such a beautiful soul really to me was like, wow, that is a beautiful quality. You're an amazing person. And then we became really close and, you know, I don't know if anyone's seen Victor Crowley, but um, I've always been amazed. I love Adam Green. I love the Hatchet franchise. So when I was, I got cast in that, and spoilers, I got killed by him, I was like, okay, I can die now. Like, my life is over. Kane Hunter killed me in a Hatchet movie. Done. <laughs> in the best possible In the best way. Which I think is a little bit of an homage to Sleepaway Camp. And any Jason is going to lay a hand on Angela. It has to be Kane. There's no, I mean, no disrespect, I love all the Jasons, you know, but, I mean, Kane, come on, it's got to be Kane. <sighs> I do love my Jasons, but I love my Kane, yes. Exactly, right? Yes, uh -huh. I love him. <laughs> so, I do want to give the audience a chance. I don't know if you guys have any questions yet, but just throwing it out there. Okay, we got one up here. Okay, so, um, I mean, this is a touchy subject, but why do you do the sequels? Because those did not hit as hard as the first one did for me. I think that you did such a better job than Pam Springsteen, even though she was great. But I feel like I would have loved them a little bit more had you like you came back and managed to look at them. Oh, well, first of all, thank you. That's so sweet. I appreciate that. Um, and it's not a touchy subject at all. In fact, nothing is with me. Um, yeah, I'm an open book. I don't have a filter. Um, so what you see is what you get. Um, because I was called in, the reason I did not do the sequels is um, I had applied to college and really, really only wanted to go to one school. Um, and they called me in just as I had been accepted into into university. And so when the director called me, Michael Simpson, he had me read the script, and I sucked. 
I was so bad. Like that Angela was like a wisecracking, you know, it was, it was late 80s, so it was, dark, it was dark comedy era, and you know, I just didn't understand, it didn't translate to me. To me, Angela was the quiet, shy, awkward. Welcome everybody, here we are at the New Jersey Horror Convention and Film Festival, and we're here with Jason Christopher, who just had the screening of his two short films, Mia and Serotonin. Only Mia played. Only Mia played. played. Only, Only Mia played. Mia played. Only okay. Mia. They said Serotonin was too uh, too much of a drama. Okay. To, to, which is fair. That's fine. It's That's fair. fine. Now, tell us about Mia, which has a lot of undertone about a woman who's basically dealing with duality. So tell us about Mia. Yeah, uh, so Mia is about a woman, uh, a college student that is uh, stuck in her you know, apartment for the night doing schoolwork, but she's winding up uh, battling a bunch of demons in her head with anxiety. Um, the whole, yeah, undertone is just pretty much anxiety and just she's bulimic and, uh, or, uh, so, which I don't know if you know this, not a lot of people do, and I, I was actually shocked when I found this out. It was totally like coincidental. Uh, Mia is actually the short term for calling someone like bulimic. Really? Yeah. Did not know that. At me either. Uh, yeah. And then uh, same girls, which then they wound up. Uh, a bunch of other people told me too, which we wanted to do a sequel to Mia. Uh, we want to call Anna because Anna is what they call anorexics. Wow. And I was just like, ooh, okay, so we'll be trying to do that. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to try to do a sequel to Mia. <laughs> so what inspired you to do uh, Mia with the bulimic undertone and a person dealing with the duality of how you portrayed it like a evil, demonic, alter ego that's not real? Well, I mean, I don't know about you, but I battle from anxiety. Oh, uh, you know, definitely. I think like the whole like pandemic situation really enhanced everybody's anxiety, and um, and now like you know it's just you know depression and, and just everything going on in the world and just like being on social media. There's just so many things that just go to it that like that depresses just me in general. Yeah. Um, and makes my anxiety go through the roof and just living life anymore in 2021. So you know it's it's tough. Uh, so that. You know, uh, getting up and just wanting to make something during a time when, like, there was a year where, like, everybody was up. Because we shot this in January of this okay. year. So, you know, after a whole year where everyone's like, we don't know what's going on. I was like, ah, I mean, it seems kind of fitting. <laughs> yeah. Now, tell us about uh, your career. How did you start? Now, you have several shorts that you've made already. How did you start into filmmaking and shorts in particular? Well, so when I was, I was one of those nerds, you know, being in middle school, making movies, you know, shoot an entire movie in one day with your friends. It's like, we got film. Uh, but we, so we had that. But <laughs> as I got older, like I just really took it seriously. And then um, when I was in a, 11th grade, my film study teacher, she was like, oh, you know, you're the only one that's taken it seriously. Like, would you like to make a short? And like, I'll submit it to, I think it was Rowan uh, University. Like they okay. were having like a film festival. So I was like, yeah, sure, why not? Wait it last second to do it. And I just did like a music video type of thing with my brother being in it um, for the band A Perfect Circle. Um, they have a song called Gimme, 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 which is a cover of a Black Flag song. Uh -huh. And so we made this short and it's about the guy like this guy who's just so like irritated with life and you know like uh the, george bush was in presidency at this time so like I, all that craze was going on and so he just like shoots himself in like the video so i turn in the i turn in the video and the next day and then at like three o'clock when like school's like let out i get a call to go to the guidance counselor and there's wow. a there's like three police officers there there's all like a bunch of um faculty and staff members there and they were just like, so you made a film and uh, we're going to expel you because oh you made God. this film. And I was just like, expel me? Like, but like at the end of the day, I was like, I did something right. I offended some people. I don't know. It felt good. Like, you know, so, I, so I wanted to take it more seriously and make so more So you got seriously. punished for being creative and artistic. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, they told me that I was ahead of my time and that like I shouldn't have done that. And I was oh, just like, okay. oh, okay. So uh, so whatever. So, you know, graduated high school, yada, yada, because they let me back in after like three months of... Um, my mom was just like, this is bullshit. Like, it is. It <laughs> like, is. Like, I'm calling my lawyer and they're like, all right, you can come back in. So I went back in, graduated high school. But after that, like I was, you know, just always like around with friends, just making shorts and stuff like that. But then took it really seriously at the age of 22 when my cousin and I, we made a feature film for $600. Um, he produced it, I directed it. And it was one of those things where like I was shooting it. Uh, we had one actress, but we, my cousin was such a great producer at the time. Uh, he, doesn't, he doesn't do it anymore or anything like that. But we were so young. I think he was 20, 20 when Mm -hmm. We're just kids, but he got access to an entire Hilton—not a Hilton, um, 
uh, one of those hotels, okay. like, like a you know a chain hotel thing. We had the whole access of filming in there. We just could only film on the weekends, so we like shot it for like three months. Made this whole thing, and then we screened it at our local like theater in uh, South Jersey, mm -hmm. and sold out two screenings like that night. We're like, this is awesome! Like, this is so cool. We need to make like a real movie. So we found like a couple investors, and we made the official first movie. Nobody gets out alive. Feature film. It's a feature film. Okay. Nobody gets out alive, and it's funny because Clint Howard's here at the horror convention. We had Clint Howard in it, um, and then yeah, like we, we that got distribution through um, RLJ Entertainment. Yes, uh, heard of them. So this was back now in like 2000. 2013. I was 25 when it came out. I was 23 when I made it. Um, now, you know, I'm 33. So it's, it's been a hot minute now. But but it's like I took off for a while. I moved out to LA and I wound up getting involved in the music scene. I was touring with like Marilyn Manson, Motley Crue, Alice Cooper, like all these big bands as like a photographer, tour manager, and all this type of stuff. But my passion was making films and Movies, stuff like that. Yes. Um, so I did a lot of music videos too. And then. Um, so yeah, it wasn't until pretty much just recently where I'm like, all right, let's get back into this, you know? That's I, I, I took like a lot of time to study. Yeah. Because like my first film, Nobody Gets Out Alive, like, I, you know, it, it's awesome. It's out on shelves. It's cool. Glad it got like but out. But it was a learning experience. It was a, it was the best college experience I could exactly. get because I didn't go to college. So I was like, this is the best college experience. Like got, it's, it went to distribute to 19 territories worldwide. And so stuff. it went out and did it. And, um, but yeah, now like, you know, a few years down the line, it's like, all right, you know, I, let me, you know, let me find some actresses that I really want to work with and stuff. And that became uh, Sabrina Stoll and um, Emery Franklin, who are both in uh, Mia and yeah. Serotonin. And, and they're fantastic. You know, they, they're just, you know, we, we wanted to make Mia. My whole goal with, for 2021 was just like, I just want to make a short, one short a month throughout mm -hmm. the entire year. I got two done. Okay. Well, actually, I got three done because I just wrapped one. Um, but, but yeah, so they're, they're fantastic. They're hungry. They just want to make stuff. So that's what we did uh, with Mia. We, we just, you know, I, ha I have a bunch of camera equipment and stuff. And it's like, let's make it, make it in my apartment. And we can so would you it. recommend for filmmakers that are starting out, a good way to get into it is to start with shorts, get it seen, get it recognized, and then move your way up? To be honest with you, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm not even going to bullshit it. Everybody has their own path. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, like as I said, it's just like I did shorts that were like I wasn't showing them anywhere. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like when I was a kid and just like, you know, got comfortable doing yeah. it. But then, you know, me and my cousin, we made a $600 no-name thing. It was like shot on a Panasonic DVX 100B. Yeah. It's like, like Canon, like the, to, the access to get in a Canon or yeah. Amazon to order things wasn't around then. You know, exactly. like kids don't understand what the, how easy they are. Oh, happens. I know. Um, so we, we did what we, what we had to work with. shut after like it was released when like, you know, the movie wasn't what yeah. I thought it was going to be or anything like that. And it just, it, it became this thing, whatever. And then, and then, yeah, like my path went, oh, making, doing music. Like I produced records yeah. and all this stuff and I went that way. And then I finally found my way back here. Yeah. So it's like, it's, it's hard to say, you know, what to do. What I think someone should do is just like pick up a camera. You, there's no excuse anymore. You can pick up, you, I shot an entire music video on uh, my uh, oh, cell yeah. phone now. Yeah. Um, I want to thank Jason Christopher for his thank short you. Mia thank you. just premiered here at the New Jersey Horror Convention and Film Festival. Uh, where can people, if they want to check out your shorts, is there a place they can? So Mia will be released. It was supposed to, I'm pissed because mm -hmm. I got thousand like a thousand uh, postcards printed with the date for November 16th of when, it was, when High Octane Pictures is releasing it. That's no longer the date now. Uh, <laughs> I feel like I jinxed myself. <laughs> but uh, in December. We're, we're releasing it in December and that will be on High Octane Pictures uh, YouTube page. Uh, Serotonin, which is in talks with this vidiverse. We, I don't really know. Ex I'm assuming the new year. But but yeah, there's not really a release date for that one oh. yet. Um, but, but yeah, two shorts, like it's doable. You know, you can get up and you can do it and find distribution nowadays. Absolutely, you know? so, absolutely. So Jason, thank it. you so much thank for you. doing this. Thank Guys, you, check you. out Mia. Jason Christopher here, directed thank it, you. made it, it's his short. Thank you so much, and we'll be back with you more later. Thanks.